This is Twit. Uh, Ken, you want to talk about .NET? No, but let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Ken is not usually the Microsoft guy, and I, I don't think of him as the .NET guy either. Well, it sounded like a good article to cover okay. uh, because Bobby Borisov wrote it, of course. And he wrote about the launch of the latest and most advanced version of the .NET free and open source development platform. We are, of course, talking about <clears throat> Microsoft.NET 9. <laughs> now, .NET 9 has thousands of improvements, including substantial updates across the entire .NET stack, bringing increased productivity, unmatched performance, intelligent features, and enhanced security, according to Bobby. The server garbage collector has been adopted to better meet applications' memory requirements, especially in high-core environments, while reducing memory usage by up to 93% in certain benchmarks. According to developers, they've seen major gains in the Tech and Power benchmark, showcasing a significant 15% jump in request per second performance. These enhancements make .NET 9 ideal for developers building high throughput, resource efficient applications. Alongside .NET 9 is .NET Aspire 9, a powerful set of tools, templates, and packages designed for creating production ready applications easily. It has new APIs and features like the ability to con keep containers alive between debugging sessions and integrations for platforms like OpenAI and Milvis. Bobby notes .NET 9 continues to evolve full stack web development with ASP.NET Core and Blazor. The .NET multi-platform app interface, user interface or I believe it's pronounced Maui. Developers can now easily build apps across mobile and desktop from a single code. According to Bobby, this release of .NET 9 brings increased performance and deeper integration with Android, iOS, macOS, and <coughs> Windows <laughs> platform features. Oh, come on. Some of those others deserve a cough, too. Yeah. <laughs> I suspect the same is true for Linux. I recommend reading Barbie's article to see what he says about a certain buzzword I've avoided using. Thank you. <laughs> so, I've got I've got a buddy that is a big .NET fan, and uh, when you when you talk about .NET, you've got to remember this is not this is not the decade ago .NET where it was terrible and you had to run Mono to make it work and everything was broken and on Linux at least, although on Windows too it was broken a lot of times. Uh, no, .NET is now open source, fully cross platform, runs natively on Linux and on Fedora. So like. When you think about the different Linux distros and, and how you know, strict they are about packaging software, we're free versus open source and patent encumbered and all that, Fedora is one of the strictest. I checked this just the other day. Fedora is one of the strictest. And so, like, there's a lot of things Fedora won't do because of patent reasons or, or other, you know, because of their rules. You can go to Fedora and you can pull up DNF and you can install uh, the .NET platform. It's just there. It is right in the Fedora repos. So you can install it on rel you can install it on ubuntu it's there it works um dot net is dot net is pretty i've never i've never programmed in it um but i've i've been told that it's not too bad these days so it's a win i've uh on the <coughs> windows side i've done a bit of a dot net development using a uh, visual studio back in the day i do really wish an ide like visual studio would be available for Linux for it, and I'd get back into it. Rob, what? You realize that Visual Studio runs on Linux? No, that's Visual Studio Code. No, oh, okay, okay, okay. Does, so does VS Code not do .NET? Well, like Visual Studio, you actually have like the graphical, like you have your you put your your canvas on there, and then you drag a button over to it and you drag a, and then you click the button and it takes you to the code and, and you 
type in there what you want that button to do. Oh. It was easy to make things like you didn't have to know what you're doing, which is why a lot of bad code was done. <laughs> it was easier but, uh, than which Visual is what Rob Basic. liked it. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, so it worked okay, great okay. Until it breaks. There, there's I Gambus. The- Gambus is actually a very underappreciated platform in linux it's been around for years i think they're on version three or four now but and and that's very much like it if you want to see what it's like try out the gambus interface and it's it's very similar except for that's that's a, a basic like language only yeah this, this so that's that sort of interface is kind of like what people would call a low code interface right it makes it easy without having to write a whole lot of source code to just click and drag and do things i mean the the GUI part of it, you don't have to code. But mm-hmm. when you actually code, you still have to type all the code out. It just it starts <laughs> it for you. Like you click the button and it says it, on it, button click parentheses close parentheses and then you type in there what you want to do. And it has a lot of autocomplete or IntelliSense, I believe, is what they started calling it eventually. Mm-hmm. Rob, it control C, control V is graphics. not typing code. <laughs> <laughs> so Visual um, Studio handles the graphics while you end up putting in the code that handles the logic be- behind mostly. what the application does. You don't have to uh, manually code out the, the, the GUI part. So it know, looks I, like there are extensions for VS Code that uh, can give you some of that same uh, functionality if you really, really want it. Well, I'd be interested in checking it out then. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how good was it at doing that? Because I, now I've only got experience with like one program, but I knew somebody when I was writing tester code, they, they had a front end and it was in for Python. And it was, I believe it was TK is what they were using. Mm-hmm. And they had an automated system like that. And it just generated so many lines of code. I mean, it was just. I don't know. You don't. You re- can't even. Crazy. I don't know how you could even see what the GUI code was in there. It just never showed it anywhere. So it could have been complete trash on what that was. But That's actually kind of a problem when you can't get into the GUI code to fix things or customize things. It's probably things. somewhere. I probably could just open like the files that it actually created or yeah. something. But uh, it, it functioned well. I mean, I, I had a pro- program that I sold for years. Actually, it, I gave it away for years and I started selling it. All right. <laughs> we makes it. me think of Atari Pilot <laughs> with Turtle Graphics. <laughs> hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>